great warning from the Prophet ﷺ regarding such people. يقول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم من أخذ أموال الناس ينوي سدادها سد الله عنه ومن أخذ أموال الناس ينوي إتلافها أتلفه الله He who takes the money of people with the intention to pay it back Allah سبحانه وتعالى will pay it back for him Allah will help Allah will make it easy for him Some people might borrow from you a dollar He will not rest and you might even Give, you might have given it to him and you did not want it. But he will not rest until he gives it back to you. Okay? And some people, he might take a million dollars and thinks he's entitled to it. You owe him. And he might, and you might never see him. Okay? So very important that we don't like that. So a person like that, who doesn't want to paint, but he has the capacity, he has the capability to paint, what's the situation with him? This person is mandated to pay it. He must pay it. He has no choice. Alright? He has no choice. When it's due, it's, he has no choice. What if he doesn't? If he doesn't want to pay it? Alright? Or he denies or whatever. يقول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لي الواجد يحل عرضه وشكايته أو عقوبته لي يعني المماطلة so لي الواجد يعني a person who has and he choose not to pay he drags it he doesn't want to pay he avoids you okay لي الواجد يحل عقو يحل first of all عرضه قال يعني بعض العلماء قال عرضه يعني شكايته. Someone who has money to pay his debt but he doesn't want, he's dragging, he's running away, he's avoiding. The Prophet said, such behavior makes his عرض halal, meaning you can complain about it. يحل عرضه وعقوبته، عقوبته يعني حبسه. So what happens to this person is you complain to him, you complain about him to Hakim. Usually when you write, in, when you read in the books of Fuqa, the word Hakim, you know Hakim can be like the, the, the top person in a country or in a society, whoever, the president, the king. But usually in the books of Al-Fiqh, Al-Hakim means Al-Qadi. Right? Qadi. Qadi is the judge. Okay? So you complain to Hakim, and Hakim has the right to put him in jail. Put him in jail. Usually when someone will realize that he might end up in jail, well pay. So pay with honor. No. Okay? He has to be humiliated. And the dragging of the rich person, when the rich person is in debt and he start dragging and avoiding, that is born oppression. The Prophet calls it. Now the third one. And that is in Muflis. The bankrupt. Okay? What do we do with the bankrupt? Someone whose money is less than his debt. But he has money. He has property, he has a house, he has a car, he, he has some money. But if he if he sells everything he has and try to pay off his debt, he cannot pay the whole thing. That is al-muflis. That is the meaning of, of, the, of the bankrupt. All right. Let's see what Ibn Qudama, rahimahullah, said about this. فَإِنْ كَانَ مَالُهُ لَا يَفِي بِدَيْنِهِ كُلِّهِ فَسَأَلَ بُرَمَاءَهُ الْحَاكِمَ الْحَجْرَ عَلَيْهِ لَزِمْ وَجَابِهِ now we are talking about the main topic of this section, and that is al-hajr. And we said before, uh, that means al-hajr, in the language means al-tariq wal to, to make it, to strict it on someone, to make it tight on someone, to prevent him. And when we talk about it in fiqh, in this situation, we are talking about preventing someone from having access to his money. Alright? You can use the term, 
the, the contemporary term that is money freezing or asset freezing, but it's not accurate. All right? Because the point or the purpose of the hedge, the purpose, the purpose of money freezing in our situation and what the fuqaha talk about is to freeze it with him and pass it to someone else, to the lenders, to the sellers, to the people he owes money to. Usually in today's terms, asset freezing usually gives you the, the impression the money is being frozen somewhere. Freezing, no one will touch. But that is not the situation. Meaning he's, hedge meaning he's prevented from having access to his money or using his money. Once the Hakim or the Qadi uh, issues the verdict or issues the, 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 the hukum or the ruling, that's it. This person doesn't have the right even to spend his own money. All right? That is in Muflis. All right? Now when does that happen? Everyone who has money and who, owe, who owes money and what he owes is more than what he has, does he have to go through this? No. Who goes through that? Who, who, will go, who will go through the head? Who will have to go under this? No, no. This person has less money than his debt. But does that automatically mean that he will have to go through this? That he will have to get his money frozen or his assets freezing? No. No. Who will? No. The time this takes place, the hajjah that we're talking about, when person prevented from using his money and that money will automatically transfer to the lenders, to the sellers, to whoever he owes money to, when they complain. But if, how many, a lot of people won't complain. A lot of people won't take a Muslim to court. A lot of people won't do that, right? Okay? A lot of people will think it's not worth it. He might be even relative. He might be a friend. He might be buddy-buddy, right? Not everyone. Once they complain, then it becomes mandatory on Qadi, on the judge, to go along with the proceeding. He has to proceed. He has to proceed and freeze this person's money. Once they, even if it's only one, what does that mean? He, maybe a lot of people, he owes a lot of to, money to a lot of people. Even if one of those asks for that, the Qadi has to go through. Yeah? Very important. <clears throat> and we mentioned last time about the Prophet وسلم, did that with the money of Mu'ad. Mu'ad ibn Jira radiallahu anh. The Prophet did that. He, Mu'ad had owed money. The Prophet وسلم, made hajjah or freezing of his money so he can, and he paid off the lenders. So it is in the Sunnah. And also in, in Mu'atta Malik, uh, at the time of Khilaf of Umar, there was a man from Juhayna tried, uh, he, every time he, this person, every time he will hear about a fast camel, fast horse, whatever it is, he will go buy it. Why? So he can get to Hajj before anyone else. <laughs> every time he'll hear something like a, a fast running camel, he will go buy it. All right, 2009 camel. Or 1400 Hijri camel, whatever it is. <laughs> Every time he hears that, he will rush to buy. So he got in debt. And those things are expensive. Okay. So when they when they complained to Umar al Khattab about him, the Prophet وسلم, or Umar al Khattab radiallahu an, took over his money. And he said, whoever, uh, whoever wants money from this person or whoever this person owes money to. He should come to us, so we will pay him from this person's money. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. So, so that's the deal from the Sunnah with Mu'ad, the Prophet with Mu'ad, and this is the deal from the Khilaf of Umar, Okay. Yes. Yeah. Um, now. 
It's very important, again, to emphasize the point. If you don't need to borrow, don't borrow. If you don't need to be in debt, don't be in debt. Even, as we mentioned when we talked about the day, 